This is Ray Balzer with AIM Pro Billiards. In this video series, we're doing an overview of the many methods to figure out the cut angle of a shot. This is optional, new, and definitely not traditional. You learn a limited number of cut angles and then just shoot those pre-learned aims. Here in part three, we'll introduce table geometry. If you haven't watched parts one and two, you should do that first. And if you don't know what an aim right is, you should watch the overview video. And if you are interested in learning to judge cut shot angles, how are you going to accurately practice them and learn to aim them if you don't own an aim right? You should order one now. Nowhere else can you get such an easy to use, convenient and durable practice tool designed for pull shooting, aiming, and position play. And if you order in the next hour, I'll include the book on dieting with banana splits. Operators are standing by. No, just kidding. Actually, it comes with a user's guide with amazing detail about each defined angle. Send me an email or buy from an online reseller such as Cyberts. And if you're a strong player and don't think that you'll get anything from it, Buy one so you can use it to teach your friends. Okay, let's get on with table geometry. The table geometry technique requires good memorization and some arithmetic. You actually compute the cut angle by separately estimating the object ball to pocket angle and the cue ball to ghost ball angle, both relative to the table. Then usually subtract one from the other to get the cut angle. That doesn't sound too hard. Get two numbers and subtract. 50 minus 20 is easy. But there are many numbers to memorize, details and scenarios to learn, harder numbers to subtract in your head, about 83 minus 49, and you have to be able to do it all quickly. Impossible? No, I do it regularly, even in tournament play. But it is demanding. You have many reference angles to learn, plus you have to be able to use either the number or 90 minus the number, and you must be able to subtract in your head and do this under game pressure. You must recognize the cases when you need to add the numbers instead of subtracting them, and you have to be able to shift your cue stick parallel to a line, physically or mentally. The object ball angles are based on lines you memorize from the corner pocket and the side pocket. Joe Tucker introduced this concept with his aiming system. He used even increments of 10 degrees. Alternatively, you could learn the angles to each of the diamonds, or learn both if you really get into it. Note that this is based on wanting to pocket a ball directly. For safeties, combination shots, and banks, you have to parallel shift the shot line to determine the object ball angle, but that's for another time. For the first cases to learn, the ones we'll cover in this video segment, you only need to learn a few of these angles. The cue ball to ghost ball angles are estimated by comparing it against memorized table angles for lines connecting all table diamond pairs. We'll only use two of the three groups of lines in this introduction to simplify it for you. Now realize that it's the angle that counts, not a particular line. So use your cue stick to parallel shift the actual cue ball line to nearby diamonds, aligning one end of the stick to a diamond, and then see where the stick points at the other side and interpolate to get the approximate angle. Here in Table Geometry 1, I will show you a few categories of shots, and you have already seen the data to follow along with how they are done. You can decide if it looks interesting enough to give it a try. I'll say more on this at the end. I will cover two types of shots that are easier ones, requiring less memorization and easier math. We'll start with shots near to the rail. Consider this shot. It's thin, but we don't quite know what the angle is. Estimate the angle anyway, for two reasons. First, 
it'll help you develop your angle judgment, and next, it'll act as a check on any errors in the coming computation. So now let's compute it. Let's see the cue ball to ghost ball angle by looking at the rail diamonds. There is a two diamond offset. We'll measure from the long rail, so this angle is 66 degrees. The object ball angle appears to be about 5 degrees. Study the diagram and see if you agree that you subtract 5 from 66 to get the cut angle. Look at the shot again. Compare your estimate with this computation. If they are close, shoot. If not, start over and resolve it or try a different measurement technique. Estimate the cut angle for our next shot. Certainly less than 61. Now let's compute it. Use the diamonds to check the angle. Now get the object ball angle. Study the diagram. Subtract the two angles. Look at the shot again and confirm the angle. Compare it to your estimate. It matches, so shoot it. Estimate the cut angle. Clearly less than 39 degrees. Now compute it. Use the diamonds to check the angle. Well, we don't know that angle, so let's do a parallel shift. It's just short of the 25 degree line. Now get the object ball angle. The diagram's a lot like what you've seen before, but in this case we have the parallel shift line. Subtract the two angles. Look at the shot again and confirm the angle. If it doesn't match your previous estimate, then refigure things. Otherwise, go ahead and shoot it. Estimate the cut angle. Obviously less than the 22 degrees of the last shot. Let's compute it. Use the diamonds to check the angle. Once again, we don't know the angle, so let's do a parallel shift. Almost exactly two diamonds. Now get the object ball angle. This diagram is similar to the last, including the parallel line. Subtract the two angles. Look at the shot again and confirm the angle. If it seems right, go ahead and shoot it. Estimate the cut angle. This should be interesting. It's a back cut. Let's compute it to double check on our estimate. Use the diamonds. Recall these cue ball lines. Now get the object ball angle. We're adding the angles for this back cut. Look at the shot again and confirm the angle. Again, if they agree, go ahead and shoot.
We're switching to short rail shots. It's pretty thin. Estimate a number. Now we'll go compute it. Use the diamonds. We're using the short rail as the zero reference. Now get the object ball angle. It's like what we've seen before, except using the short rail as the zero reference. Subtract the angles. Look at the shot. If the computation matches your original estimate, go ahead and shoot. Now let's do that same shot to the side pocket. Looks around 61 degrees. Let's double check. Use the diamonds. Since we don't know these angles, we'll do a parallel shift and see the same three diamond offset. Now get the object ball angle. Well, I better show you a few object ball angles for the side pocket. We're using the short rail as reference, but parallel shifted to the side pocket to side pocket line. Subtract the angles. It does look like the 61 degrees we estimated, so let's go ahead and shoot it. This is clearly a lot less than 61 degrees. Make an estimate. Now compute it to double check. You know the drill. Use the diamonds. Since we don't know these angles, we'll do a parallel shift. We're using the side rail as reference. Get the object ball angle. The diagram shows the parallel shift and that you subtract. Hopefully this was close to your estimate and you feel confident to shoot it. Now let's do that same shot to the side pocket. So we'll estimate 22 degrees and check it. You should know what we're going to do next. Object ball angles for the side pocket are slightly different than for the corners. So this looks a lot like what we saw when it was at the short rail. If the computation mismatched our estimate, we could use stick versus body as another way to check ourselves. We'll try a back cut again, this time reference to the short rail. Estimate it, then compute it. object ball angle. It's a back cut, so add the angles. If you're confident that you know the angle, go ahead and shoot it. Now let's do that same shot to the side pocket. So I'll go out on a limb and guess 18 degrees, but let's compute it. Remember on these side pocket shots that we're using the short rail as reference, but that's exactly parallel to the line between the side pockets. It's a back cut, so add the angles.
No surprise, it matches our estimate. Estimate the cut angle. Here's a side pocket back cut where the cue ball is going to cross the pocket to pocket line. So estimate, then compute it. It's a back cut, so add the angles. I've always had trouble estimating back cuts to the side pocket, so being able to measure it somehow is a lifesaver for me. Okay, that's it for side rail shots. So learn the angles, and then do this practice drill that I suggest, cutting both to the left and to the right. Put the two balls up, take ball in hand, shoot one, then shoot the other, and keep putting balls up until you've done at least a rack. Then do another rack, cutting the balls the other way. The second category will be with the object ball on the foot spot, but ultimately with the ball anywhere on the line between the side pocket and the corner pocket, which is a 45 degree line. Our first such shot looks like a classic spot shot. So as before, the first step is to estimate the cut angle. Now let's do a calculation for comparison. Let's zoom back and look at the table diamonds. The object ball angle, of course, is 45 degrees. This is the only time I'll show that. So check out our geometry diagram. We subtract the angles. Now compare calculation versus estimate. If it's good, shoot it. Let's look at two shots near 45 degree cut angle. We'll start with this one. Estimate the cut angle. Now calculate for comparison. Estimate the cue ball angle. Subtract the angles. Decide if you're good to go. Estimate the cut angle. Now calculate the angle. Estimate the cue ball angle. It's a back cut. Add the two angles. Remember, if the estimate and the calculation are off, recheck everything. Otherwise, shoot. Cutting the seven ball into the right corner pocket sure looks intimidating. Let's analyze it. But first estimate it. Then compute it. Estimate the cue ball angle. Definitely a back cut. Add the two angles. Once you're sure of the angle, buckle up and go. Let's rotate 90 degrees and shoot in some other pockets. Estimate first, then calculate it. Estimate the cue ball angle. Now 
and the ball is still on a 45 degree line. Subtract the angles. Confirm that the proposed angle looks right. Let's shoot into the side pocket. Estimate the angle first. Sure looks like the 22 degrees we just shot. But let's analyze it. Estimate the cue ball angle. The object ball is still on a 45 degree line. Subtract the angles. We were right, we did recognize the 22 degree angle. Let's go back to the corner pocket, estimate the angle first, then let's compute it. It's certainly thinner than the 22 degrees. Estimate the cue ball angle. Subtract the angles. We can see from the cue ball to nine ball position that it's not a 45 degree cut and it's more than 22, so 34 looks good. Like before, I'm going to take that same shot to the side pocket this time. We expect it to be 34 degrees, but we'll calculate it. Estimate the cue ball angle. Subtract the angles. No surprise here, it's a match at 34 degrees. So let's shoot it. So let's estimate this. Looks like a little more than 45 degrees. And then let's go compute it to com for comparison. Estimate the cue ball angle. It is a back cut. Add the two angles. Yep, that's about what we expected, so let's shoot it. There's a method to my madness. You should see a pattern here. The same shot going into the side pocket. So estimate, then compute. Estimate the cue ball angle. Again, it's a back cut. Add the two angles. We were right. We did recognize it. Shoot it. Okay, let's wrap up using table geometry to analyze foot spot shots. First, you need to continue to learn the cue ball angles. Now this drill is just like the last, except we put the two balls in different locations. In this case, the foot spot and the head spot. As before, start with ball in hand. Make one ball getting position on the other. Playing position makes the drill more interesting and more fun. It also leads inevitably to having different angles on the shots, which gives you more opportunity to practice
calculating the different angles. Remember the real point is to practice the angles and the angle computation. So take your time and do that. And don't worry so much about rushing to go make the shot. And if you miss a shot, stop. It's an opportunity to figure out if you calculated incorrectly because that's the point of this, to make sure you can calculate the angle properly. Now I want you to understand more about the 45 degree line. Let's further consider this shot we looked at before that's a quarter ball hit. If it wasn't clear before, let's make it very explicit now. It's not just the spot that's on the 45 degree object ball line. It's actually everything on that entire line between, or I should say, any ball at all that would appear on the line connecting the side pocket with the corner pocket. So when the object ball was on the spot, the shot seemed intimidating. But consider this. The ball is close to the pocket, but yet the geometry is the same. It's still on the 45 degree line, and the cue ball angle is still the same and the aim is still the same. Quarter ball hit. You would feel confident in shooting it. We can shift anywhere on that line and we still have the identical shot. The object ball angle is the same and the cue ball angle is the same. The cut angle is the same. You shoot it the same. The only difference is when it's close to the pocket you have more margin for error if you're wobbly with your stroke. But otherwise, you aim it the same. This concept applies to all the shots. When we looked at the near-to-the-rail shots, we could have done the same thing to show how we could move the shot up and down the rail. And as long as the object ball was on the same object ball angle, and the cue ball had the same relationship, then all of the numbers would have been the same and it would be shot the same. There is one exception I should add, as the ball is further away from the pocket, then cut-induced throw could become an issue that requires compensation at larger distances. If you have a table with tight pockets, you might need throw compensation at virtually any distance, in which case I go back to aim at the same at any distance using throw compensation. That's because throw compensation is a function of the cut angle. It doesn't matter how far the object ball is away from the pocket. Okay, let's wrap up. First, an advisory. If you play on seven or eight foot tables, be advised that the angles I gave earlier can be off as much as one degree. I'll address this in more depth in a future video. But for now, if you're concerned about one degree, the place where it's an issue is the long rail to long rail diamonds. On seven foot tables, for the angle lines that are three to eight diamonds delta, the difference is about one degree. When it's only one diamond delta, it's about half a degree. For two diamonds delta, the difference is about three quarters of a degree. The errors are less on an eight foot table. When the angle is measured with respect to the short rail, you need to subtract. When measured with respect to the long rail, you add. But again, it's only about one degree, worst case. For most people doing this practice, it probably won't matter. Again, in a future video, I'll give suggestions and options on how to handle this angle variation. So you might postpone memorizing these angles. So for now, you should just copy the numbers to paper and bring them with you at the pull table for practice. Determine if you like the technique and want to continue with it. Future topics include not just angles on different tables, but angle confirmation and diagnosing angles gone wrong. And there are many ball positions to consider. When I first developed this, I created a set of 19 index cards each with a different set of shots to analyze and remember, and guidelines about using long versus short rail as reference, and how to be consistent with that. 
we need to fill in the rest of the object ball angles. And let's not forget those short rail to long rail cue ball angles. And then how do you apply this to combination shots? Congratulations for those of you who have made it this far. I'm sure the complexity is off-putting to most. I will only continue this table geometry series if there's sufficient interest. If so, it might possibly be a product, a DVD with handouts, for example. Let me know in the comments or send me an email. Thanks for watching.